we will see now some uh, arrangement process to ensure that uh, safety is managed uh, during operation. One of these uh, first elements is uh, what we call the periodic safety review. This is a, a, a process that should be run every 10 years and the purpose is to reassess the design basis of the plant to ensure compliance of the actual plant condition with this design basis and this includes uh, specific inspection and, and wall down is uh, the, the plant compliant with the assumption made, made at the very beginning. And if it is necessary, the design basis of uh, the plant uh, should be updated because uh, new methodologies, uh, new computer codes could have been developed. All the results of R&D, because there are still a lot of R&D going on, on on the various safety aspects. So. Um, the, the, the purpose is to update completely and to uh, uh, align the, uh, uh, the level of safety of uh, the plan to uh, the most uh, uh, recent standards. So um, how to identify the potential improvement? So this is done first uh, through the probabilistic safety assessment update because the new data could have been available. There are new ways of uh, looking at the uh, transients. So the, pay, the probabilistic safety an analysis uh, will be updated. Of course, uh, a very important uh, element will be the operating experience feedback. When there is a major accident, last like it was the case with uh, um, Swim Island, for instance, the feedback was uh, introduced uh, uh, directly without uh, waiting for the periodic safety review process. But there are uh, <coughs> less significant events that are worthwhile to be considered and to, to be feedback, and these are collectively taken into consideration during this uh, periodic uh, safety review. It is also uh, important to, to compare. Uh, with the uh, current international standards. Uh, we will talk later uh, about these uh, standards, which are also uh, periodically uh, updated. And uh, so comparing the, uh, uh, the condition of the plant with these uh, standards is something important. And uh, also uh, new, new, new plant could be built uh, in the meantime. And uh, as uh, the safety is a con continuous improvement process. It's important to make a comparison um, with uh, the, the last plant being built. And, and uh, for instance, in France, there are a requirement when making a periodic safety review of a operating plant to try to make modification and to uh, uh, increase the level of safety close to the, uh, the last uh, plant uh, being built. Last but not least, as I mentioned already, there are some uh, R&D uh, results that are available through all the experiments that are continuously to be made. So uh, all these elements will uh, help identify a potential improvement that, of course, will be uh, implemented through modification uh, in the design of, of the plant, not only on the design, but also on, for instance, on the operating uh, procedures or, or process. Uh, the, uh, the hardware modification usually will be made during a long outage. Uh, in some country, you have a, a sort of a, a important outage for inspection every 10 years. And uh, so the, the, the outage is long and there is time to make, to implement a lot of, of modification. Uh, globally, this is a, a lengthy process. Uh, to uh, identify all these uh, uh, improvement and to implement it. And this is uh, the, the, re the regulator <coughs> is uh, implied uh, because it uh, should approve uh, the, the exact scope of the periodic safety review and also uh, the results uh, and the approve also, uh, of course, uh, the modification to be made. Where we are now, I think it's important to look back and uh, to, to, to give a sort of uh, historic view of 
the uh, of nuclear safety. Um, up to the 70s, uh, safety was essentially a matter of design. And uh, designer, the engineer, had a, a very technically focused uh, views. And uh, most of the safety consideration as a technical basis. And there were very little consideration of the human behavior element. As I say so, so, sometimes, the, uh, the bright engineers that design these facilities just forget that they should be, should be operated by a, uh, by, by a human. <laughs> so these <coughs> this, uh, pure technical views uh, was uh, shocked by the Sri Mile Island accident. And uh, at first, uh, there was some consideration for, for of the human aspect of the operator, but the the operator was seen more as a source of human error. And uh, all the improvement made after Srimal Island was essentially to try to avoid uh, human error from uh, the operator. So, so the introduction of a lot of ergonomic consideration, I mentioned some of them uh, after uh, Sri Mile Island in, 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 in previous parts. And uh, a another important evolution uh, came from the, uh, the Chernobyl accident. The, the importance of uh, organizational as well as human factors. And that uh, was the origin of the development of the safety culture uh, concept that uh, we will see now in uh, in more detail. So if we want to consider human factors, we have to identify the various uh, elements that could influence the uh, immune, the human behavior and, and uh, its uh, attitude during the, the activities. The first uh, element is the uh, social and cultural environment. When we talk about uh, safety culture, an important word is culture, because uh, the culture is not the same everywhere. The uh, US culture is different from the European culture, or for the Latin culture, or the Japanese culture. And these elements are important in the, the way the, uh, the individual behaves. Another aspect is the uh, regulatory context. Uh, the nuclear industry is a very regulated industry with a lot of requirement, not only on, on technical aspect, but also on uh, the organizational aspects. Um, another factor is that the fact that the human and, and operators are not working alone in a nuclear power plant, they are working in team. So the organization of the team, the working uh, methods, the, uh, the current practices are elements uh, which uh, influence the behavior. And then there are all the, also the, the tools, the uh, ergonomics the, uh, of the control room, uh, the tools, the procedures that you can use, the operating doc documentation, and all elements that influence also its uh, competencies. So when we want to study this uh, human factor and all these elements have to, uh, to be taken into consideration to explain and to try to influence the behavior and the attitudes of, uh, of human being in a run. So much now about the safety culture. This uh, concept of safety culture, as I mentioned, has been developed after the accident of Chernobyl and uh, a report from the uh, International Atomic Energy Agency in, in Vienna define the safety culture in a, rapport, uh, a report uh, called INSAG uh, 4. So safety culture is the characteristic and uh, attitude in organization and individuals which establish that as an overriding priority nuclear plant safety issues receive the attention warranted by their significance. Every word is, is uh, important in, in this definition. And uh, safety culture imply not only individual, but also the management and 
the, the the commitments of and and the policy on on safety developed at the uh, uh, higher level of the uh, organization. Um, the at the, the at the policy level, there should be a, a clear statement about the safety policy and the the, the management structure, uh, the resource. Uh, of uh, the company devoted uh, to sa safety should be clearly defined. At the management level, uh, def the responsibility should be very uh, clearly defined. The, uh, there should be also a clear definition and control of safety practice. The management should ensure that uh, the staff has qua qua uh, co uh, is, is properly qualified and, and trained. There should be also a policy of rewards and sanction. And uh, last but not least, there should be a, a, a process of audits and, and periodic review of uh, uh, the elements of the, the management. And at the individual, uh, the uh, commitment to, to safety uh, should be uh, proved and, and uh, shown by three uh, major elements, uh, questioning attitudes, that is, uh, not satisfying of what you see, but uh, always uh, asking it, it himself or it seems myself, uh, a, a, a what if, is what I see is normal, is there something that comes wrong, is this something anormal, and reporting that. Uh, what we call a rigorous and prudent approach is that things before act. Uh, be prepared to do uh, what you have to do, and if uh, anything uh, is is abnormal, uh, report and do it. And uh, the third element is a communication, communication between the team, communication uh, with the hierarchy and, and the main manager. So safety in operation relies on, on technical aspects uh, defined at the design stage, but uh, heavily also on the operator's uh, behavior and uh, attitude. So safety should, should be managed, uh, hence the concept of, of safety management. The safety management system includes those arrangements made by the operating organization for the management of safety in order to promote a strong safety culture and achieve good safety performance. So the various components of the safety management have been defined by the uh, International Atomic Energy Agency in Vienna in a report uh, named INSAG uh, 13. And uh, it uh, uh, includes uh, various elements. Uh, first, the definition of safety requirements and organization the definition of safety policies, including standards, uh, resource, and, and, and target, and a, a correct structure of the management with uh, the clearly defined responsibilities and uh, accountabilities. Uh, at the second level, uh, the planning of activities uh, should be carefully prepared, uh, including uh, risk assessment, uh, there should be an, an organization to control the, all the activities important to safety. Uh, the management should uh, ensure competency of the staff through training and also communication and team support. And beside the, the control for the direct hierarchy, there is a need of uh, supervision uh, by an external organization. And uh, we will have uh, further details on that. Uh, in uh, one of the next uh, slides. <coughs> At the uh, individual uh, level, we find again these uh, questioning attitudes, this rigorous and prudent approach, and this uh, communication needs, which are the uh, individual elements and uh, elements of the, of the safety culture. But there, there, there is a need of uh, a closing the loop, and this is done through audit, audit uh, review and feedback uh, process in order to measure the performance and uh, to take corrective action and improvement uh, if needed. So safety management is uh, not just uh, 
a, a separate element of management, but it should be completely integrated into the overall management system, but uh, with a, a specific priority on, on safety. There are a lot of uh, standards that exist uh, on management system. There is this uh, uh, European Foundation for Quality Management that uh, should standard. There are the ISO standards, uh, 9,000 and 40,000 on various aspects. And uh, also uh, some uh, requirement uh, from uh, the uh, International Atomic Energy Commission, we will see that a little bit later. Uh, that define uh, how to manage uh, the f facilities and activities in, in, in the system. As an, as an example of uh, safety management, I will provide you some uh, elements of the safety organization of EDF, the, the French uh, uh, utilities. On the uh, left-hand side, uh, you have the line management, uh, and it uh, start at the level of the CEO, the president office, and goes down to the uh, management of all the uh, operation, operation, operating plants, and then at the plant level, the plant director, and uh, 24 hours in the, the control room, the shift manager. These are the person responsible for safety, the person responsibility, responsible to take action and, and to act. But in order to assume these uh, important responsibility, they need some helps, some external advice, some expertise, and some uh, also verification capability. So at all level, uh, you can see in this organization on the right hand side, uh, uh, a team of peoples who interact with the uh, management level in order to support them or to check uh, uh, what they are doing and to ensure that the responsibility of the line man management is uh, fully uh, fulfilled. Uh, at the plant level, there is a safety engineer uh, who meets uh, regularly with a shift manager at the uh, plant level, there is a safety and quality uh, advisory uh, unit. Uh, at the national level, there is also uh, some structure, uh, including uh, a nuclear inspectorate. And uh, also at the CEO level, there is a, a general inspector for nuclear safety uh, who report to the uh, president office. But <laughs> Not only is this uh, uh, outside support, uh, there is a need to discuss uh, safety issue because safety is uh, not always black and white. So there is a need of debate. So there is a need of organizing at each level also this discussion between the person who are in charge and who are responsible for, the, responsible for safety and uh, the support and advisory structure. So this is done at the plant level uh, when the safety engineer and the shift manager meet every day to discuss about the actual situation and the safety of, of the plant. Um, at the plant level, uh, there is uh, safety technical committees where several persons could take together and discuss safety issues. And there is also similar committee at the uh, nuclear operation division and also at the, uh, the level of the CEO. So these committees uh, had gathered uh, uh, both the person in charge of taking the action and the responsibility of safety and those which are in charge of advising and uh, making verification get together and uh, ensure that the uh, safety is optimized and uh, that safety culture is uh, overriding priority uh, to be given to safety is ensured. So <clears throat> an important element of uh, the uh, safety culture is this uh, internal transparency. Uh, because we learn uh, from good practices, of course, but even more for mistake and, and near misses. And it's important uh, to 
that these near misses or uh, good practices uh, could be known. Uh, this is a, a fundamental uh, attitude of uh, safety culture, because from this uh, is a good practice or near misses, it's a, a, a very powerful tool to make safety improvement. So it's important for the management to develop what we call a no blame attitudes uh, and uh, also being able to re uh, reward reporting events or uh, uh, attitudes uh, which are uh, in complete compliance with this no, uh, safety culture. But of course, uh, this is sometimes difficult because it depends on the local culture and uh, especially this uh, no blame attitude. Uh, this is something uh, which should be uh, specific to all uh, industry uh, who has uh, some risk and uh, uh, it uh, should be specifically developed in the nuclear industry. So this internal uh, transparency uh, is uh, necessity for external communication. Nuclear energy is a high-tech industry which is difficult to grasp by the general public because it's complex and radioactivity is not something that you can see. So it, it's very important to be, uh, to be open and to try to, uh, as much as possible, uh, communicate with the public because hiding things can only develop fear in public opinion. So it's important to report incidents to make periodic reports available to the public on the uh, actual plant condition, the event that occurs and the release that are being made and, and so on. This uh, uh, open communication is a condition to counter rumors and, and false information. So there are some uh, specific arrangements uh, uh, around uh, plant, nuclear plants uh, to communicate with the, uh, the public through uh, not only these uh, local information committees, uh, which uh, gather the main stakeholder, uh, public officials, but also uh, uh, NGOs, uh, we could, could participate in this committee where the uh, uh, the uh, plant operator comes and and reports and uh, big questions on what happens on on, on the plant. In terms of uh, reporting uh, events, uh, the uh, uh, International Atomic Energy Agency in Vienna developed uh, a, a communication uh, scale called International Nuclear Event Scale, INES, to uh, categorize the uh, various events that could happen on the plant uh, according to their uh, consequences. And uh, there are seven levels in uh, this uh, communication uh, scale uh, coming from the, uh, the small anomaly uh, without any consequence. Uh, it's uh, just the fact that uh, something happens uh, which puts the plant behind the authorized operating regime. This is a level one. Uh, level two, uh, all incidents, uh, includes a significant failure of safety system. Level 3 became to be something a little bit serious because there have been uh, some impact on workers, those incurred by uh, some staff, or that uh, safety barriers uh, have been affected. Uh, at level 4, uh, it begins to have some impact of sight. Uh, and uh, because of some release, uh, which uh, still remain in the authorized limits, but uh, with uh, outside consequences. The fifth uh, release, the, the fifth level, uh, implies some, uh, some uh, off-site impact, still minor, and typical uh, Three Mile Island accident was categorized as uh, level five. Uh, the, the level six, Six, yes, is categorized uh, uh, by releases that uh, uh, imply some uh, countermeasure on the, the public. Uh, Fukushima was first uh, uh, classified at this level six before being uh, upscaled to the level seven. And this level 
seven um, implies a major release and, and impact and typical Chernobyl, Chernobyl was uh, categorized at uh, a, a level seven. Uh, 